Hi, it's Penny Black and Jill Foster here for another PB&J card class. And today's video is actually the first in a series of four featuring one layer Christmas cards featuring Penny Black's newest stamps from the Mary and Joy collection. And this collection of four cards, I really wanted to go with a very elegant and um, sort of almost a no line painted look to the cards. And this is the card that we will be creating in today's video. And just a reminder, I will have all of the supplies used in creating this card up on screen at the very end of the video, including the stamps, the inks, the markers, paint brushes, everything. You can just hit pause when it comes up and check everything out in further detail. So the stamping that I've done features, they're all wrapped up stamp set. This has the poinsettia up in the top right hand corner. And then I'm also using the berry sprigs down in the bottom left hand corner of the transparent set called All Natural. And I went ahead just ahead of, um, before I began and stamped these onto Canson 140 pound watercolor paper. And I stamped them using Desert Sand Memento ink. And I'm going to be doing all of my painting and coloring with the Arteza Twi markers. And these are a water soluble marker and they have two um, are dual edge or dual tip to them. So one edge is the brush tip that you're seeing here, but it's a very firm um, and pretty small brush tip. And then on the other side is a very fine tip marker, which I'll just use in a couple of instances. And I'm just working petal by petal, putting the darkest color sort of towards the center of the poinsettia. I am adding in a little bit of yellow with this red, just to keep things from getting too pink. And then I just go in with my paintbrush and some water and blend those colors together and work my way out towards the tip of the petal. And this keeps most of the darkest color concentrated towards the center or the bottom of that petal where there are other petals layered over the top of it and the lighter color towards the tip. I find that with the Canson 140 pound uh, cold pressed watercolor paper that these markers blend very well with the water, especially if you don't um, leave them sit too long. So you can see I put color them onto the paper and then I blend them with water right away. That way that marker ink um, doesn't have too much time to absorb down into that paper. If you want to have a little bit more time or if you want to skip the water step altogether, uh, these markers also work very beautifully on Bristol paper. So it's really just whatever um, you prefer. You could also follow these same very similar steps of stamping and painting this in using your favorite watercolors or um, you could even do uh, Copic markers or alcohol based markers to color these in. I just really like the vibrancy of these and how you kind of get a nice almost loose uh, watercolor look to the entire image. So you can see I am kind of working where the petals are not touching each other. I don't want to work two wet petals next to each other. That's how you can really start to get things that uh, are blobby where they all just start to blend in together. Also, I am just kind of keeping an eye out if I have two petals that are right next to each other. I make sure that the one that is sort of underneath is darker towards the edge and um, the one that is on top is lighter towards the edge. And I'm so sorry here, there's a couple of times where my head pops in. Um, I try to get it out of the way there as uh, quickly as possible. Now in between, um, if the petals that I'm working on that are adjacent to each other are not dry yet, then I can use just use my heat gun to go ahead and dry that. I'm often impatient or impatient and um, don't want to wait for things to dry. So you can see here now where I'm moving up to sort of like the next level of the petals. Uh, I'm being careful uh, along the edges like of this petal to not go too dark. That way I keep the differentiation between each petal and you get the look that some petals are underneath and some petals are on top of each other. And I do kind of just spin around my paper as I'm working just for the most comfortable um, position for my hand and the marker and the coloring. 
and just grabbing um, some water there and then blending that. I love to create um, cards like this, especially Christmas cards, where I go ahead and I stamp everything first and then I can go at any time and do the coloring. So uh, it's just nice to have them ready to go. You can color, you know, just one flower or just the berries or one section of your image or your card. You can easily, especially I find with these markers, you can easily take them, you know, out in the living room and color while you're watching TV. Just have them ready to go. And it's just a nice way that you can have some really beautiful handmade cards um, that are all a little bit different and you don't get too bored. Uh, at least I, um, I don't like to mass produce the same card over and over and over, but this kind of keeps with the same techniques and the same tools and the same supplies, which does sort of speed things up without getting too boring. You'll notice here on these top petals where I'm putting just that darker color just towards the very sort of bottom center of the petals and that yellow along the sides and then leaving even some white and some very light areas toward the edges. And I didn't notice too much um, cross-contamination of the red onto my yellow marker, but I do have just off to the side a piece of scratch paper that if I do notice it's getting a little bit red on the tip, I just color with that yellow marker onto that scratch paper until it colors clean. And you could do this, um, like I said, with your favorite watercolors. You could also do this with any of your favorite water-soluble markers. Of course, if you change exactly what marker you're using or to a different paper, your, uh, the effect might look a little bit different, but I'm sure it would be beautiful. Uh, however you decide to do it, the best fits, um, fits the supplies that you have on hand. Now I am drying this before I move on to the next step. And here I'm just taking that very fine tip and I'm using a dark purple here and in just a few places I'm just adding a very small line and just really darkening up the shadow. And it is amazing what this little touch adds to the entire um, dimension of that flower. Just putting a few darker shadows here and there and that very fine tip on the marker makes it very easy to do that. Here I'm going to take the fine tip of this green marker and just sort of trace over the center of the flower. And now I'm using the brush tip to add just a little shading around the outer edge. A touch of yellow in there just to give it a more natural look. And then I'll go in and just with a um, brush that is not too wet, just slightly blend that, soften it up and make it look more natural. And then I'll just dry that to make sure that I I'm happy with the look. I can also go back in then with that with a darker green and highlight some of those um, some of those stamped circles and detail there in the center. And I just play around till I'm totally happy with the look. Now I'll begin working here on some of these pine needles, just coloring with the lighter green marker just right over the top of the stamping. And that Desert Sand Memento ink that I did all the stamping with, it does a nice job of sort of taking on the color that you put on top of it. So you can see with that light green when I colored over the top, it sort of just made all of those pine needles, that stamping underneath, look as if it is done with some light green ink. 
Now I put a little bit darker color down here at the bottom and I am just going back and blending that slightly with some water and while it's still wet I am just putting that marker right back on top and that makes it even easier to blend that and kind of smooth that transition from the dark to the light. One thing I love about this stamp, this is from that all wrapped up transparent set, this entire corner of the poinsettia, the pine cone, these pine branches, and the berries that you see um, connected to the poinsettia, that is all one stamp. So it makes it so easy to, to create a beautiful card because the composition is so beautiful no matter where or how you stamp this onto your paper, it's going to just have a very elegant look. Now here I took that darker green and that very fine tip of that marker and just added in a little bit more detail. Now for these berries, I'm just going to color them in. I'm not even going to worry about going back in and blending them with water. This makes it very easy to color a lot of different berries um, using markers as opposed uh, to a paintbrush and I'm just using a mix of colors. I like to add a little bit of that golden yellow and that light peach color in there and all the colors, the exact names of these markers will be listed at the very end of the video um, up on screen in that supply list. Here I am using the very fine tip of the marker to trace over the branches and again you can see how handy it is to have that super fine tip on the other side of the marker. Next I just wanted to show you how I'm going to do the pine cones here. I'm using this, uh, this is a sienna uh, brownish color and so when I add water it does get a little bit rosy so I will um, go back in and put some of that golden yellow um, and mix it in there even while it's still wet just sort of drop that in and the main thing is I try to try to remember to leave some areas of white um, on the pine cone and that gives it that definition and I'll go ahead and dry that so things don't continue to blend um, or spread too much since I was working in such a small area here again I'm taking the fine tip of that marker and just adding in a little bit more detail of things sort of uh, blended one into the other, you can always go back in then and define the area a little bit more. Now you will have noticed I have already stamped the sentiment on this card. I stamped this using Ranger Archival ink in the color of Acorn. And this is from Penny Black's Thrill of Hope transparent set. So many beautiful, beautiful sentiments for Christmas on there. And to finish off this card, I'm just adding a little bit of inking using um, this is Toffee Crunch Memento ink and a Sukaneko Jumbo Sponge Dauber. And I am being kind of careful not to go over the red, especially in the berries because they were not blended with water. So they will smear a little bit, um, not once you go to mail the card, um, but since I was just creating them and just coloring and everything hadn't quite soaked down into the paper, um, you just have to be a little bit careful if you're rubbing over that with a sponge dauber or an ink blending tool that you don't smear that ink. And then this is ready to be mounted to a standard A2 four and a quarter by five and a half inch note card. And here's a look at that finished card. I thank you so much for watching. If you enjoyed today's video, be sure to subscribe and give it that thumbs up. And you can also connect with Penny Black on Facebook, Pinterest, Instagram, Twitter, as well as our website and blog. And I will link all of those for you down in the YouTube description box below. And if you stay tuned, here is that supply list as promised. Thanks for watching.